Hey you guys, this is Dawn Hutchins from Veggie Cooking and what I'm going to do today is show you how to make a recipe that I'm looking at adding to a six ingredient or less cookbook that I'm working on. The original recipe um, or the original cookbook is this time and dime six ingredient or less. It's saving strategies, basically like time saving strategies. Um, so it's satisfying six ingredient or less and I have it on Amazon, but I think it's a little confusing because it goes with another book called Time and Dime, but people didn't realize this is a six ingredient or less cookbook. So um, what I'm doing is revamping this for veggie cooking, and I am also going to be adding a few recipes. So today I wanted to show you how to make these buffalo chicken, oh my god, buffalo chickpea pinwheels. So it's kind of a take on buffalo chicken pinwheels. So um, this is just a plant-based version. And what I like about this version is chickpeas have fiber. And the only way you can get um, something that has protein and fiber is in plant foods. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you how easy this is. And it's going to be six ingredients or less. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need is a cup of cooked chickpeas, and then we're gonna add some cream cheese. I'm using this Kite Hill cream cheese. And so what we're gonna do is start with maybe a third of a cup. Uh, <clears throat> so let's see how this goes. Now, the very original recipe that had chicken in it called for six ounces, which is almost a whole container of um, cream cheese. So you just mash this in. Okay. Now I'm using a spoon, but you can use a potato masher as well. Um, in fact, that's what I have off to the side in case this didn't work great. Um, but if you don't have a potato masher, you can use, um, just a fork or a spoon. But this seems to be going pretty well, so I think we should be okay with this. All right, now what we're gonna do, and I don't even know that you need more than that. That looks like plenty, don't you guys think? Okay, next thing we're gonna do is add some hot sauce. I'm using Frank's hot sauce because it's not too much. I'm going to start with two tablespoons. The original recipe calls for four tablespoons. So let's see how this goes. I am a huge hot sauce fan. I was not in my younger days, but I sure am now. Okay, this is looking pretty buffalo-y. And we're going to season with some salt and pepper. Okay, that looks pretty good, don't you think? I think it looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Hmm, ooh, that's good. Yeah, I think two tablespoons is plenty for this amount. Okay, next thing, we're gonna cut up some little green onions. And I'm using kitchen scissors because I do a lot with kids. And sometimes they're so young that they, they don't use knives. And especially if they're in our virtual cooking classes, they may not have access to the kid safe knives. Um, okay. Now, you guys, I really think this could use some garlic powder. So I'm adding these. We're gonna add a little salt and pepper. Look at this cute salt shaker I have. Salt, pepper. I mean, I like pepper. Okay, now let's add some garlic powder. I don't have this in the original recipe, but God, I just love garlic powder. So I think we should use it. Um, okay, I'm just gonna sprinkle it in like that. So obviously that's not an official amount. And I'm gonna take my fork since I lift the spoon. Let's try this. Mm. 
Mm. Oh, that's yummy. Okay. That is got a kick. <clears throat> and I'm using these bee free wraps. Okay. So these are like gluten free wraps. Not usually a giant fan, but um, I mean, I feel like they're not bad for gluten free. So you're going to spread it on. I think this is enough for maybe like two, two wraps. I'm going to spread it over evenly, but leave a little bit of an edge. Make sure I mush down the, we might could use a little bit more cream cheese, but I say taste it with a third cup. All right, so this is how much I have left over. I have about half the mixture maybe left over. And these are six wraps. It doesn't say how big these are, but all right, I'm going to I'm going to wrap this one and then we're going to see how this goes. I'm kind of trying to smush it to the edges. And then see how I left the at the very end. Oh, it's going to come out here. All right. All right. Now I need my knife so I can slice it. These aren't really huge pinwheels. but I guess it doesn't need to be like totally huge. Hmm, I didn't wrap it tight enough. I'm gonna try it though. Hmm, <laughs> good, good flavor. cute okay now for the second one I'm gonna try I'm gonna add more so I'm gonna add the second amount and these are make a really good appetizer so this is oh wow this is way more so I could have totally added more in the other one yeah, I think I'm overdoing it here. Okay. Leave an edge. Now with this one, I'm gonna add some lettuce. So we're gonna try it with some lettuce. Like that. And I'm gonna try wrapping it a little tighter. Like that. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, tighter. Okay, wrapping it really tight. I almost feel like it needs more in the ends, but I guess it comes. All right. All right, there we go. Well, that looks pretty. And slice it. That does look prettier. Although it's kind of falling apart there. I'll put him aside. Okay. It's kind of pretty. I'm cutting these a little fatter. That looks more like a pinwheel to me, right? I mean, okay, so I've got some adjustments I need to make on the recipe for sure. Well, there you go, you guys. Thanks for coming along with me in my recipe testing adventure. I'm really liking the lettuce in it. 
I think that looks really pretty. Look at the difference in size between. <laughs> and so, yeah, we're gonna go with some lettuce and I like the garlic powder and these are pretty good. I hope you try them out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.